their cylinders. Thanks to a newly developed market, tourists and rail fans, the last narrow gauge common carrier railroad to operate east of the Rocky Mountains has managed to hang on by the sometimes thin thread of existence. This then is the story of that existence and the railroad's motive power that made it possible. The Baldwin built Mikados of the East Broadtop Railroad, the little engines that could. Construction of the East Broadtop Railroad began in the fall of 1872. The first rail was laid in Mount Union, Pennsylvania on September 16th of that year. Earlier that year, the railroad's board of directors held their first meeting. At the meeting, it was determined that in order to lower construction and operating costs, the East Broadtop's tracks should be 36 inch gauge. This decision was made before a clear distinction had been arrived at between the current standard gauge of four feet eight and one half inches and the narrow gauge trackage. If the other narrow gauge railroads that once cobwebbed the Allegheny Mountains of Pennsylvania had been a little more successful, perhaps standard gauge railroading as we know it today would be a little different. The 36 inch gauge track started at the Pennsylvania Railroad Station and traveled southeast to a point where the old Pensy main line swings north crossing the Junietta River. This is where the East Broadtop's yards were located. The yards provided the interchange point for freight from the standard gauge Pennsylvania Railroad to that of the narrow gauge East Broadtop and vice versa. Although time consuming, interchanging standard gauge cars to the narrow gauge presented no major problems. The railroad car would be jacked up with an overhead crane in the Mount Union yard, and then the standard gauge trucks would be rolled out from under the car. Narrow gauge trucks would be rolled into their place and the car lowered. Now the car could travel system-wide on the smaller gauge track. When the car was returned to Mount Union, the procedure was reversed. Today, interchange between the two railroads is only history. The Mount Union yard is nothing more than rusting hulks of hopper cars, overgrown with weeds. Construction of the line south of Mount Union progressed at a rapid pace through Ogwick and Shirleysburg. During construction in the small Baptist cemetery north of Shirleysburg, a number of graves had to be moved out of the way so the line could run right through the middle of it. Even today, the roadbed is within several inches of many of the ancient graves. The concrete bridge at Ogwick still defies the elements, but it and the track to the south of it were damaged badly by Hurricane Agnes in 1972. On August 30th, 1873, the 11 miles of track between Mount Union and Rock Hill Furnace opened for business. When the rails first reached the station, the original village of Rock Hill Furnace was over a half mile away clustered around the iron furnaces on the bank of Black Log Creek. The center of the twin borough of Orbisonia was on the opposite bank of the creek, much closer to the station building which the railroad had constructed. The railroad promptly named the station Orbisonia. Even though the village of Rock Hill Furnace slowly expanded to include the station and yards, the official name of the station continues to be Orbisonia. Rock Hill Furnace was established as the site of the railroad's major shop complex. Those shops have withstood the test of time and are virtually unchanged today from when they were built. Expansion continued south of Orbisonia to Robertsdale, a distance of some 19 miles of very rugged mountain railroad. In between lay 12 bridges, sidling and raised hill tunnels, and some very stiff grades. Leaving Orbisonia southbound, the railroad crosses Jordan Summit on a four-mile grade passing through Pogue to arrive at Three Springs. From Pogue to Three Springs, the route is nearly a continuous climb. The stiffest grade begins west of Three Springs at Saltillo. This grade is four miles of 2.65%, putting the railroad well up onto Sidling Hill. Thereafter, grades of up to 2% lead the railroad through Sidling Hill Tunnel to Coles Summit and around the Horseshoe Curve to Rays Hill Tunnel and through it. 
The railroad then follows Great Trough Creek past Cooks to Robertsdale. When the railroad arrived at Robertsdale, the first of many coal mines, Rock Hill No. 1, was sunk into Broad Top Mountain. As more mines were opened, the railroad extended tracks to reach them. With the new mines came the extension of the main line beyond Robertsdale to Woodvale and Alvin.